Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Foods in Quincy and Hanover. In Boston and New England, 617-8221-969. Verizon Wireless users, free call, just dial pound 96.9. Let's get to your calls now. We've got uh, Maureen from Cape Cod. Welcome to 96.9 Boston Talks. You're on the Natural Health Show. Hi, um, nice to return your call, Mark. Um, oh, great to hear from you. I just, I just heard, you know, I just was coming home, dropping my daughter off, mm-hmm. and I was listening to your radio broadcast and uh, found it very interesting. Um, I had melanoma um, surgery this past June. Mm-hmm. My brother had stage three melanoma uh, three years ago, and my mom died of um, melanoma a year and a half ago. And it's so interesting to hear what you have have to say about the uh, nutritional therapy. Remarkable, they, remarkable study. It really it is. is. It really is. Because you know what? I've gone to many doctors. I've gone to skin doctors, surgeons, and um, and everyone has a different opinion. But for me and my brother, who are still alive from this horrible disease, you know, we believe in that, you know, the nutritional therapy is the way to go. We've been practicing it. We've been doing, you know, what they've told us to do. And, um, you know, my hope is that, you know, um, I don't pass it on to my children. And, uh, right. Well, you know, I think that um, there's there's no question that there's enough evidence nowadays <laughs> that nutrition affecting biochemistry in the manner that it does has a direct impact impact on immunity. That's right. uh, that's not a news flash. That's so right. for, for folks to essentially be um, in, in any way, shape, or form uh, not inclined to go on that uh, on that wagon is for me kind of confusing. I think that uh, it, to to get on board with the supportive nutritional pro- program to support and strengthen nutrition, or I should say biochemistry through nutrition, for the purposes of enhancing immunity is to me real fundamental to this issue of, of, of chemistry and human chemistry and, and the chemistry of cancer. Uh, there's, um, again, a, a tremendous amount of uh, folks out there who, who really ascribe to the notion that uh, you, when you talk about passing these problems on, mm-hmm. the genetic component, we've only got 30,000 genes, uh, so we're talking about the genetic probability being considerably lower than a lot of folks think. There's um, a number of folks who, you know, the father of the modern human genome himself uh, went on to say that he, the genetic determinism, it should be considered dead. You know, it's not about the genes, it's about the behavior of the genes. They, we learned that you can only change your genes one-tenth of one percent every 250 generations. Forget about that. Right. But the behavior of a gene can be altered in seven tenths of a second. So, it's what right. we do with our food. It's what we do with our chemistry. It's what we do with our thoughts, our attitudes, our minds. We have more power over immunity and over supporting our chemistries uh, than most of us are inclined to believe. Oh yeah, I, I you know I believe full heartedly. As well as I'm trying to do a uh, hereditary test on myself to see if mm-hmm. I pass the gene on to my my children, yep. who I have two of. And even that, it, it, you know, it's a battle. It's a battle, you know, with my doctors and my insurance company to try to see right. if I qualify for that because I've only had one melanoma. If I had two melanomas, they would do it. But um, more importantly, is you know to go to your doctor, be checked, and to eat right and healthy. Um, you and got it. To, you know, in order, because I have two other siblings, you know, and out of the three siblings, you know, all of us have had some kind of precancerous mm-hmm. or melanoma in our family. And, you know, losing my mom at the age of 90, who was at the skin doctor, you know, uh, many times. And now my dad, who's 91, who's still alive, um, is is been brought to the skin doctor because it is, I believe it is a hereditary disease. And I think the only way to, to mask to get rid of this is by eating healthy, well, keep, is by doing the right keep, thing. Keep in mind, the, the again, the father of the modern human genome is J. Craig Venter. Mm-hmm. And J. Craig Venter says, look, genetic reality is a probability factor. Mm-hmm. It's, not a, it's not a slam dunk. And with only 30,000 genes, the probability isn't as high as most of us would imagine. Mm-hmm. So it's behavior plus that genetic predisposition or probability factor. So you have a greater probability, but you, have, you also have a potential to really alter that probability factor uh, with behavior. And that is, to me, what diet's really all about here. That's right. Uh, there have been some great, great studies, but this one in particular, 2006 Gerson Research uh, Organization yeah. in conjunction with the University of California San Diego Cancer Prevention and Control uh, Program. Uh, yeah. Again, comparing those five-year survival rates of 153 stage 1, 2, and 3 melanoma mm-hmm. cancer patients who underwent uh, diet therapy versus 16,000 uh, similar patients who did not undergo dietary therapy 
just taken from standard medical literature. Mm -hmm. And uh, when you consider those numbers, again, those who did receive diet therapy, 100% five-year in terms of stages one and two, 100% five-year survival right. versus 79. For those who uh, were in stage 1VA with, mm -hmm. with active metastases, 39% survival versus six. Right. For those of stage 3A, 82% yeah. survival versus 39. In yeah. stages 3A and B, 70% survival, five-year survival versus 41. You can't argue with those numbers. No. So it's, 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 and again, I think the bigger point is what the Gerson program is all about. It's really all about the idea of trying to emphasize less animal fats. And what do we know about those? We talk on this program quite often about inflammation. Inflammation no longer just means tennis elbow, folks. Right. Inf inflammation is a it's a hormonal reality in the in the human chemistry. So when you think about the prostaglandins that cause these inflammatory problems that are at the root of cancer and heart disease and lupus and rheumatoid and all that business, yeah. we really have a tremendous tremendous amount of programming ability to really alter and to program down the inflammatory agents in our chemistries and to program up the anti-inflammatory potential. So the Gerson diet is very anti-inflammatory. You know, it doesn't have a lot of animal meats and heavy fats. Right. It's, it's very legumey and vegetarian type uh, yeah. diet, a lot of vegetables, etc. So we, right. we, we've learned a lot from, from a wonderful programs such as that. Oh, I, I believe in it full heartedly. Like I said, you know, between myself and my brother, my brother just ran a, a mini marathon mm -hmm. for melanoma this weekend. He, he, he certainly would not have been able to do that without, you know, eating right and doing the right thing. Right I mean, you know, the cancer was taken away, you know, he's on radiation, chemotherapy, and interferon, and, uh, you know, um, myself included. You know, we, we, I don't think, you know, our health would increase to the way it is today if we had not, you know, been, you know, forward in, in our diets and what's important to, you know, important to, uh, you know, our disease, as I call it, because it is a family disease that I have, and, you know, losing members yep. is, is, is the way it's been. No but, uh, I just came back from Ireland with my dad in 91, where we had a scholarship, you know, in my mom's memory, yep. and, um, you know, so we're fighting this. We're well, we thank you so much for your perspective, so, and uh, you bring a great, great lesson uh, for all of us. Thank you so much, Maureen. This is a dead... Oops, okay, sorry about that. Anyway, let's go to uh, Sharon in Melrose. Welcome to 96.9 Boston Talks. You're on the Natural Health Show. Hey, how are you? Terrific, how are uh, you? I'm call I've listened to you before, and I know you talk a lot about thyroid. I believe I have a very, um, you know, a little problem with my thyroid. Yep. I'm constantly cold. I have, a, like, a high level of fatigue. Yep. Uh, weight gain for me can, can happen quickly. So I recently had a test, and the test came out like a O. Oh, six, seven was yep. what it came out to, yep. and they say it came out in the low end of the range. What yep. would you do with that? Well, a couple things. First of all, there are a lot of us that believe in what are called metabolic norms. So mm -hmm. when you go and have a blood test done, and you look on the far right-hand side of the norms, the norms that you're given outside of the flags, those yep. norms uh, are really where you want to fall, obviously. That's why they're called norms. The, pro right. the problem is, is that most of those norms are established based on the statistical data that's that's been collected prior to your particular blood test. So right. the people at that lab that visited that lab before you showed up there are part of that population of, quote, norm. Right. So you're being basically compared to the norm based on those people that were there being tested before you. Right. Uh, now, most of us could figure out pretty easily that most of the people that are blood tested are being blood tested because of suspicion of illness. Right. In other words, healthy people are not blood tested more often than not. Correct. Therefore, you're being sort of measured in what I call an abnormal norm or an, un right, right, an, an unhealthy right. norm. So finally, metabolic norms are, are what we're looking at more and more these days that suggest because of that reality, you want to kind of shrink by at least 65 to 7% each each side left and right. So uh -huh. your, your, your high end and your low end should be shrunk by about 7% to give you a more accurate, quote, healthy norm. Because if you're just in the borderline of an, of an unhealthy population, you're probably not doing all that great. Uh, right, that's what I said, because they said the norm was 0.5, and I said, well, I'm 0.6, so I'm just kind of in the norm, but like you said, of an unhealthy group. Yeah, exactly correct. So I think right. that uh, your point is right on the money. The other thing is uh, about that is, uh, you know, so many folks folks uh, are starting to really re realize now that uh, their physicians and a lot of their uh, specialists that they're working with regarding thyroid, etc., are, are really more inclined 
to treat subclinical patients. In other words, those patients that say, look, I've got all the subclinical evidence. I have cold fingers and hands and feet, all the stuff you're talking about, dry, brittly hair, blah, 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 low energy, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, so you meet this certain kind of subjective criteria. And many of those physicians believe that they have a responsibility to try to treat and help and support that patient until those symptoms clear up and not just simply work off numbers. Okay. I mean, it's useless to, to in many folks' opinion in mine as well, to just simply reduce you to a number and say, look, if you got a good number, then then take off. See you later. We're right, going right. to well, just send, send you on your merry what way. Would you suggest? What would you suggest in a case like that? Well, first things first, I think that you need to uh, educate yourself a little bit more. Uh, I, I always encourage folks to realize that you are a consumer in the medical and in the healthcare world. You need to educate yourself. The educated consumer is, has a distinct advantage in all these scenarios. So there's a great book that I always talk about called Solved the Riddle of Illness. Dr. Stephen Langer, Solved okay. Colon, the riddle of illness. And that particular book is, to me, a great primer on how to really get the message about what it means to have thyroid problems soup to nuts. So it really covers the topic thoroughly, and, okay. it, and it does so in a way that's very understandable and uh, gives you an awful lot of good guidance and a lot of good information so that when you do meet with your physician or choose a new specialist to work with that's more inclined to listen, with, listen to you, uh, that you might have more to bring to the table, which is always a good thing. Okay. Okay. Would that be an endocrinologist, do you think? Because it seems like the primary doctors aren't really versed in that. It, it would be. No question that it would be. And again, okay. I think that uh, you, you want to meet with a good endocrinologist that, uh, that sees you as a well-represented patient. And again, I think reading this particular book will put you uh, miles ahead of where you are right now. But uh, yes. you know, gather that information and have <laughs> ongoing uh, communication with your endocrinologist, and I think you should do fine. Okay, great. Thank you. My pleasure. Take care bye -bye. of yourself. Bye-bye. All right, let's get to uh, Tom in Rockland. Welcome to 96.9 Boston Talks. You're in the Natural Health Show. Hi, Mark. Uh, quick thing on me. I have multiple sclerosis mm -hmm. and a bad back, and I've had MS for 21 years. Mm -hmm. And the last four years, it's starting to progress. I have a kid that's into natural healing. He's out in Arizona. He's taking some classes from Dr. Andrew Weil, and great. now he's into acupressure. And like I said, natural healing stuff. And he just says, Dad, since you're starting to progress, it might be a good idea to get some cranial sacral work done. And is that something that you would recommend? Are you familiar with it? And if yeah. so, is it, what would that do to help me, and how long would I have to go for? Yeah, well, if he, yeah, I mean, first of all, I agree with him. I think he's, uh, he's obviously a well, uh, well educated uh, student of natural medicine, and that's a good sign. And congratulations with uh, his wonderful progress, by the way. Thank you. Uh, but I would say, no, he's right on the money here. He knows what he's talking about, because if you think about cranial sacral, you're basically working the entire spine top to bottom. And, you know, you're looking at uh, your, your lower sacral basically trying to generate that nerve movement and uh, and to try to get some s consistent uh, nerve flow between the top and the bottom of the spine. And there's some real talented people out there that are very, very gifted with regards to uh, craniosacral therapy. So for someone suffering from a neurodegenerative disease or a neuroinflammatory disease of any kind, I think craniosacral is generally a good recommendation. Where would I find a uh, qualified person on the South Shore? Well, probably uh, the best thing you could do is, you know, there's definitely a lot of good referrals throughout uh, the South Shore at South Shore Hospital. Um, and believe it or not, South Shore Hospital in Weymouth does have folks that uh, do craniosacral work there. But uh, if, you, if you strike out on that, you can go to my website at maxhealing.com. If you're not satisfied with the referrals that you get, uh, we'll get you some names. But, uh, again, Max Healing is one word, maxhealing.com. Check it out, and it'll get you right to our office numbers and all that business, and we'll make sure you get some uh, good referrals. Is this a long process? Is what a long process? The craniosacral therapy? Yes. No, nah, it should not be at all. Great. All right, thank you so much. Pleasure. Thanks Have for calling. Week. You too, thanks. All right, let's get to uh, Tom. Let's you know. Let's get to uh, Bobby and Stone. And welcome to 969 Boston Talk Show on the Natural Health Show. Hi, Doctor. How are you? I have um I I am not on any medications whatsoever. I take a lot of vitamins. I walk three miles every morning. I I have begun to see that my blood pressure is rising. Uh in the morning it's it's usually about a hundred and thirty over eighty. By the time I get home mm -hmm. it's like one sixty, one seventy over ninety. Yep. 
uh, and I don't, I, re- I really don't want to take any medications. Do you suggest anything? Well, first of all, you know, you really do have to work with uh, your physician. I mean, you, you, for starters, you can't handle these health issues, uh, these potentially real ser- serious health issues on your own. That's not a wise idea, obviously. So I appreciate your interest in, uh, you know, going the natural route. But you want to make sure that uh, you're being watched real closely by your doctor and keep a close eye on your progress. But uh, you certainly, you know, can explore the idea of using and maybe doing some research about using C9 peptide. I talk about it quite often, but C9 peptide is basically a protein that's an isolated protein from the bonita fish, you know, those little schools of fish that you see down in Florida. They've actually uh, they've actually made uh, this dehydrated protein supplement out of those little bonita fish because they have uh, an ACE peptide, an angiotensin-converting enzyme peptide in their protein. So there's a product that you can get at the health food stores. I know our great uh, friend in sponsor Good Health Natural Foods has it. It's Dr. Michael Murray, M-U-R-R-A-Y, Dr. Michael Murray's ACE peptides, A-C-E, just the word ACE peptides. And I believe those are 500 milligram caps. And uh, a lot of folks are just using like two to three of those a day and watching their BP come down quite a bit. So uh, it's very effective. Also, really important information about things like magnesium taurate, T-A-U-R-A-T-E. Uh, magnesium taurate should be taken about 500 milligrams total a day. Uh, one of the better times a day to take that would be uh, later in the day and before bed because it really is going to help you uh, get a good quality sleep as well. Um, and finally, there's again a lot of research that suggests that folic acid is can be uh, beneficial as well, especially when used with magnesium. So that's magnesium taurate, 500 milligrams before bed, folate or folic acid, uh, 800 units. Uh, I'm sorry, 800 micrograms for, for uh, 800 micrograms a day. And uh, the Dr. Michael Murray's ACE peptides, 500 milligrams, two to three a day. Hey, we're going to have to shoot out of here for a quick little break. And uh, we've got uh, a wonderful guest, Alberto Villaldo. So we'll be with uh, you in just a few moments, and we'll be with uh, Alberto Villaldo. Stay uh, right where you are. Turn on your mind. mind. 96.9 Boston Talks. Hi, this is Laura from Good Health. If you listen to the news, chances are you know that many Americans are seriously deficient in vitamin D. Recent studies at Mount Sinai Hospital measured vitamin D levels in women who were newly diagnosed with breast cancer. The findings are a wake-up call. Women who were deficient in vitamin D were nearly twice as likely to experience the spread of cancer to other parts of the body. That's 94%. That's huge. These studies reveal significant correlations between low vitamin D levels and the rates of breast cancer, osteoporosis, and depression in women. If you're at risk or if you have cancer in your family, you may want to consider having your levels tested and adding vitamin D to your daily regimen. Good Health carries pure vitamin D3 by Life Extension, Solgar, and Jarrow formulas in gel caps, liquids, and chewables. For as little as $4, you can fight these sobering statistics. So visit us in Quincy or Hanover. The risk is real, but we're here to help protect you and your family. See you soon, and thanks for listening. Make plans now for a day with Alberto Violdo, renowned medical anthropologist, psychologist, and leading teacher of shamanism. Hear Alberto Vialdo on Thursday, October 20th, 6 p.m. at the Lantana 43 Scanlon Drive, Randolph. With so much worrisome news lately, Alberto may be just what you need to keep yourself in balance, not forget your true mission, and likely get nourishment. Alberto will share spiritual inspiration coming from his own process in a unique presentation, 2012 and beyond. Register for Alberto Vialdo at MyHealthyLivingMag.com. General admission is just $49. $49. Program begins at 6 p.m. This is your chance to see Alberto Violdo live Thursday, October 20th, 6 p.m. at the Lantana in Randolph. Reservations, call 781-834-2728. That's 781-834-2728. Or online, myhealthylivingmag.com. Myhealthylivingmag.com. Reason, up, Come to learn right back, so how we can live in genuine harmony with each other. Now, back to The Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Foods in Quincy and Hanover. In Boston and New England, 617-822-1969. Verizon Wireless uses free call, pound 96.9. And, of course, uh, 
We, from time to time, love to have very special guests here on the Natural Health Show, and we do right now have a very special guest, Dr. Alberto Vialdo, who is a medical anthropologist and researched uh, healing traditions in the Andes in the Amazon for over 20 years, founder of the Four Winds Society and author of more than 10 books, including Courageous Dreaming, The Four Insights, and Shaman Healer Sage. Dr. Vialdo is dedicated to bridging ancient wisdom teachings with modern medicine and, and psychology. He recently shared his perspective on two thousand. 2012. We're very happy to have you. Dr. Vialdo, welcome. Great to be with you. Tell us a little bit about, uh, first of all, the, the wonderful event that you have upcoming. There's a great event that uh, folks need to know about, and uh, that event is going to be upcoming very soon. And uh, tell us a little bit more about that. It's going to be October 20th, I believe, at the uh, in Randolph, Mass. Hello, Dr. Vialdo. Like we're having trouble connecting with Dr. Vialdo. It's got to be a cell phone. Yeah, it's got to be a cell phone snag, but uh, all right, should we just take a call and we'll try to get back to Dr. Vialdo? Okay, let's get to uh, Robin in West Brookfield. Welcome to 96.9 Boston Talk Show and the Natural Health Show. Hello, glad to be here. Um, I just had a question for you to see if you could speak a little bit about sure. the Budwig diet. I'm not sure if that's how it's pronounced, but I read about it um, as a cancer preventative um, and as a possible healing, helping heal tumors, um, just to know what you knew about it, and if you could speak on it. I'm just going to hang up and listen. Great, and thank you for calling. I do know quite a bit about it. Dr. Uh, Dr. Joanna Budwig actually was a uh, seven times nominee for the Nobel Prize, a remarkable biochemist and nutritionist who uh, really has spent a tremendous amount of time in her life dedicating her life to the notion of natural healing and really understanding the power, the potential power of biochemistry and diet. And she did indeed find that when you take a protein, they use clabbered proteins such as uh, you might consider yogurt or cottage cheese, and combined it with flax oil and found that the two, when combined, produced some really remarkable immune-enhancing effects that, uh, in her way of thinking and based on her research and study, uh, really did in indeed stop cancer. And uh, in many of her research studies, uh, she did confirm that uh, the power of the antioxidant uh, found, the antioxidant uh, properties found in uh, the flax seed oil, Combined, when combined with a protein, uh, surely did exhibit uh, a remarkable, remarkable healing potential. No question about that. Um, so thank you for that call, and I guess we've got Dr. Vialdo back in the line. We're sorry about that, Dr. Vialdo. I'm back online. But back. anyway, we're, we are looking at 2012 and the prophecies of 2012, and we're, we're looking at it from the shamanic perspective, mm -hmm. because for the shamans, it's not so important what's going to happen, but the processes. How do you prepare to become a new human that they say will be appearing on the planet right now and that they are us, that we're the ones we've been waiting for? How do we grow new bodies that age and heal differently than we have in the past? And what is the, and what is the uh, message? What, what, how, that, how will that manifest? Well, the way that it's manifesting is that we're getting downloads actually right now to the, to the lower let's We're getting a low form of plasma storm from the sun. And if you've been following solar activity, you know that there have been huge, huge plasma storms. So we're in the peak, in the peak sunspot cycle. That this is how we get information actually. Are you traditionally through the plant weed, the fruits we eat are informed by the sun. Uh, they turn sunlight into life. Right. But now we're getting it. Instead of getting our information through the lettuce and broccoli and sprouts that we eat, we're getting it directly from sunlight. It's upgrading the quality of the information in that luminous energy field that surrounds the physical body and that actually creates the body. It organizes the body in the same way that iron filings are organized by a magnet on a piece of glass. So we're getting actually right now, according to the prophecies of the Hopi and the Mayan and the Inca and many of the Tibetans, we're getting the downloads, the codes for a new human being that will be appearing on the planet. So... 
So all these conversations that we often have here on the Natural Health Show and a lot of the listeners that are listening in each and every week uh, are representative of an elevating awareness or consciousness about about natural healing, about natural food, and really sort of looking for an alternative approach to uh, a cleaner body and a, and a more whole lifestyle. Is that true? Absolutely. You know, the, uh, the, the our bodies are information systems. You know, our bodies are more colonies than uh, they're... Uh, the 50 trillion cells in our body, only about 10 trillion are really us. The rest are the uh, the, the good bugs and bacteria that right. work with us. And so how, how do we keep this amazing colony of 50 trillion cells collaborating with each other? Because when you have a few cells that decide that their survival is more important than the survival of the, of the system, we call that cancer. Right. And the, uh, so how do, how do we maintain the highest level of information in our system through eating organic foods, eating, resting well, meditating, and tuning into the, to the nature matrix? A higher, level, in, a higher level of living. Absolutely. Um, one of the questions, of course, you know, that uh, I'd love to ask you, and I'd love to hear your answer, is so, so many people are so concerned about translating the, the Mayan calendar from the perspective of, you know, global disaster, from the perspective of asteroids, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, and yet there's another embodiment of, of wisdom out there that suggests that we're sort of already living in that change of consciousness and that sort of radical shift and then it's more of a, a shift in consciousness is that what would your take be on that well you know i think 30 years ago we were all spreading the bad news the the species extinction the co2 emissions today i think that we have to spread the good news we've got to look at the opportunities the possibilities this is the dawn of of a of an entirely new time on the planet for humans and for all species really mm -hmm. Not only because of what the Mayans and the Inca are saying, but because we are in such a critical threshold in terms of resource depletion. And the, but all of the indigenous prophecies say this is a time of quantum leaping. It's a time of rejoicing. It's a time of the new models of health to emerge, of the return of the feminine, of the feminine life force. And, you know, I kept hearing about this in my travels to the Amazon and the Andes, the reawakening of the feminine and how the feminine life force has been depleted in our bodies and in our planet. And when I went back to the laboratory, I found the feminine life is our mitochondria. It's the feminine principle in, a, in each one of our cells, and it's inherited only from our mothers. And the so here with the, the the indigenous people are talking about a strengthening and a reawakening of our cellular fuel factories and cellular repair mechanisms so that we can heal ourselves. Actually, leave out the lifespans, the healthy lifespans that we're capable of living. Well, and I believe that that's why there is so many folks are again so awakened to their self, to their nurturing self you know the idea that people are looking to feed their bodies more healthfully to take natural supplements to uh, engage in more stress management meditative uh, yoga type uh, programs etc they're ca right. they're caring for themselves many people never knew how to care for themselves so that nurturing self that you're talking about that feminine sort of consciousness or spirit within everybody is it seems to be awakening uh, in in quite a grand style right now Oh, it is. And, you know, the interesting thing is to be related biochemically, because this feminine principle is, some, is are, are the fuel factories in our cells. And if you look at this one thing that Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and heart disease and cancer have in common is mitochondrial breakdown. Mm -hmm. The collapse of the fuel factories in our cells that also regulate when cells die and when they need to replicate apoptosis. Yes. So it's a, it's fascinating to tie it into the brain chemistry and to, to the cutting edge of science. Well, and I think there's a direct... There, ooh, that is quite a connection. Is it, There's a, a direct connection there that we're having trouble kind of making here in terms of uh, the, the, the cell phone connection that we, do, that we have. But, you know, before we, uh, before we part here, I want to make sure that folks are aware of uh, this wonderful presentation that you're doing. Dr. Vialda will be presenting 
in Randolph uh, on October Thursday, October 20th, uh, from 6 to 9. And uh, he's going to offer guidance on how we can diffuse fear, help usher in a new era of cooperation during this remarkable uh, tw 2012 and beyond period. His teaching is geared to give you an experience of how you can live in genuine harmony and uh, transition uh, your environment. And your environment is who you are. And uh, this should be a very special presentation with Dr. Vialdo, a one in a million folks, believe me. And uh, I want you to contact Candida if you're interested in attending 781-834-2728. That's 781-834-2728. And also, uh, Dr. Vialdo, why don't you give the, uh, the website for your Four Winds Society? It's the4winds.com, www.the4four, winds, W-I-N-D-S, dot com. And thank you so much. Well, Dr. Vialdo, an honor and a pleasure, and uh, I know so many folks are going to look forward to getting out there, and well, they should. Thank you so much. Thanks so much. Bye-bye. Right, Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. All right. Uh, are we breaking, or are we going to take another call? We're going to take a quick little break, and uh, Katie, stay tuned. You've been patient on there. We'll get back to your call in just a minute. Talk radio, talk radio with the New England Pulse. New England Pulse. 96.9 Boston Talks. The brain requires nutrition just like the rest of the body. Although many of us depend upon caffeine for focus and concentration, caffeine is not actually a nutrient. Real nutrition is needed to enhance brain metabolism and provide antioxidant protection. This is where Jaro Formula's Neuro Optimizer comes to the rescue. Neuro Optimizer is a concentrated source of the nutrients needed for memory and mood, for concentration and focus, all without being a stimulant. Neuro Optimizer supplies the building blocks for neurotransmitters. The chemicals that allow cells in the brain to communicate and to file away memories. Acetyl-L-carnitine and alpha-lipoic acid support brain energy production. Phosphatidylserine, L-glutamine, and taurine enhance brain yeah, stability and detoxification that, in the face know, of stress. Neurooptimizer is the back. nutritional answer to the brain's needs. Ask for Neurooptimizer at I'm your local sure. health food store. Or for more information, from, go to Jaro.com. That's J-A-R-R-O-W for the best in brain health formulas. You know, when most people hear the word allergies, they think only of hay fever-like symptoms associated with airborne pollen, dust, and mold. But did you know that many experts estimate that between 60 and 80 million of us suffer from immune-related food allergies without even knowing it? Furthermore, food allergies often contribute to serious health problems such as autism, irritable bowel syndrome, ADD, headaches, and chronic ear infections. Now, there's an effective way to identify and eliminate both your food allergies and the troubling symptoms that they aggravate. Halitest Medical Labs at FoodAllergy.com offers a full complement of clinical, environmental, and food allergy testing to help you get to the root of your allergy problems. Halitest also provides you with a comprehensive rotation diet, lifestyle booklet, and a wallet card to help you live food allergy-free and stress-free. Do you wonder if you or your loved ones are among the 60 to 80 million food allergy sufferers in America? If so, log on to Halitest Medical Labs, FoodAllergy.com. Talk to your doctor about ordering a food allergy test from Halitest Medical Labs today. Food allergy Com. Make sure the food you're eating isn't what's depleting you. Do you own or manage a natural health, fitness, day spa, or go green business? Perhaps you have a unique restaurant that offers healthy entrees, heart smart seafood, vegetarian, or lighter fare options. I invite you to share your vision and deliver your message directly to health conscious New Englanders by becoming a sponsor of the Natural Health Show, New England's number one health radio show. The Natural Health Show is now welcoming potential sponsors to join our Natural Health family by offering a number of creative and flexible sponsorship packages. For information on how to become a sponsor of the Natural Health Show, simply call Candida at 781-834-2728. That's 781-834-2728. Be a part of New England's Natural Health Revolution. Join our Natural Health Show family today. <laughs> Now, back to the Natural Health Show, sponsored by Good Health Natural Foods in Quincy and Hanover. In Boston and New England, 617-822-1969, Verizon Wireless, free call, pound, 96.9. Let's get to very, very patient Katie from Smithfield, Rhode Island. Welcome. Hi, doctor. Thanks oh, for taking my pleasure. call. Um, I heard you a little earlier talking about melanoma. Um, mm -hmm. My mom was just diagnosed with stage 2. Mm-hmm. Uh, melanoma, and 
I just I heard a little bit about what you were talking about, but I'm wondering if you could quickly recap any sure. recommendations. Absolutely. We were talking about the 2006 Gerson uh, Research Organization study that was a study that they performed in, in conjunction with the University of California San Diego Cancer Prevention and Control Program, and they compared the five-year survival rate of 153 stage 1, 2, and 3 melanoma cancer patients who underwent diet therapy, dietary nutritional therapy, versus 16,000 similar patients who did not undergo any form of dietary therapy taken from standard medical literature. And uh, remarkable, remarkable results. Uh, they found that the uh, stage 1 and 2 candidates had a 100 percent five-year uh, rate of uh, survival rate after uh, their nutrition therapy versus 79 percent uh, of those uh, who did not undergo the nutritional therapy stages one VA with metastases 39 percent survival with nutrition six percent without nutrition stages 3a 82 percent five-year survival with nutrition 39 without in stages 3a and b 70 percent five-year survival with nutrition 41 without wow okay pretty remarkable numbers uh, no question about it uh, no small study and i think that the key really here was the type of diet which to me makes perfect, perfect sense. Mm -hmm. Because we're talking about a lacto-vegetarian type diet, mostly beans, legumes, a lot of uh, vegetables and fruits, a little bit of yogurt, very low sodium, low fat, high potassium, and a, and a goodly amount of uh, fresh made vegetable juice. We're talking 2,600 to 3,200 calories of that type of a dietary nature. And we're talking about, you know, the idea that most of uh, the inflammatory problems that really generate the uh, leukotrienes and whatnot that, that trigger cancers in the human body are uh, produced by a lot of animal fats, you know, the, the egg yolks, too much of the dairy fats, and too much of the red meats, uh, and even some of the fungal nuts like peanuts and things like this that have a high concentration of arachidonic acid. This particular Gerson diet didn't have that stuff in there, so to me, to me it makes perfect sense logically in terms of uh, prostaglandin support. Okay, is grass-fed beef more lean than... The non beef? It is, and it's not just that it's more lean, it's that it has actually uh, less of the the delta desaturase inflammation problem. And in other words, not to get too complicated, but uh, there are a number of different enzymes that really increase the inflammatory response. The grass-fed have less of those inflammatory enzymes. Okay. All right, wonderful. You know, Thank one, you one other coming. thing, just before you yeah. get off, one other thing you might want to consider. Uh, I haven't really spoken about it, but I'd like to mention it before we get off the air, is that there have been some pretty remarkable studies about turmeric, you know, cur oh, yeah. curcumin, the spice. And uh, there have been a number of different uh, situations in the corporate environment where I worked with quite a few different people uh, in the golf industry and whatnot who spent a lot of time outdoors, of course, and virtually unable to uh, protect and shield themselves from sun exposure. And a lot of them who had problems with uh, skin cancers of various types. And uh, a lot of them who found that when they got involved in, I recommended 2,000 milligrams of turmeric a day uh, for, okay. for a lot of these folks. And they found that they uh, their episodes it diminished markedly over a period of five years. So okay. I always tell people, take a look at some of the turmeric studies, T-U-R-M-E-R-I-C. A lot of okay. folks think about it as curcumin or turmeric. Uh, so I think uh, that's really an important component to this as well. All right, thank you for calling. Let's get to uh, Kumar from Acton. Welcome to 96.9 Boston Talks here in the Natural Health Show. Hi, uh, my mom has uh, rheumatoid arthritis, mm -hmm. and uh, so I just wanted to find out, um, one, is there any dietary supplements she can take? Uh, she's a vegetarian. Um, she's been taking a little bit of the uh, glucosamine and foreign dietary supplements that you get uh, um, in the stores, um, but I'm not sure if, if there's something else that she can do. Yeah, there, there certainly is. I mean, uh, there's a wonderful product out there called Zyflamend, Z-Y-F-L-A-M-E-N-D, Zyflamend. I usually recommend the gel caps 
I believe it's 180 gel caps there, and you want to talk about using probably two of those three times a day. So it's two for breakfast, two for lunch, two for dinner. Zyphlamen, six caps a day. Um, the other thing she probably wants to be careful of in her vegetarian diet is avoiding fermented foods, dairy products, and most of the nuts and seeds. So if she's doing, you know, a lot of the beans and legumes, those work perfectly well. A lot of the brown rices and grain, whole grain products, vegetables, fruits, those would be terrific. Uh, but to be very careful about any of the nut or seed oils, you know, no sesame oils or sunflower oils, that sort of business. Try, try to use the omega-9s like the, um, you know, the uh, olive oils, etc. I think she's better off to move in that direction. But uh, if she takes the Zyphlamen six a day, I think she'll find some, some relief along with those dietary recommendations. Okay. Uh, when you say fermented foods, uh, do you also mean uh, yogurt? Um, well, yogurt is a dairy product. That's why I think that uh, from the standpoint of trying to keep the prostaglandin 3 inflammation uh, down and to keep the the eicosanoids favorable, she wants to probably avoid that for a period of time, see if that helps. Okay. Thank you. My pleasure. Thank you for calling. And uh, let's see, we're moving right along here, but we're going to kind of wrap this thing back into perspective, kind of bring it home here. We were talking uh, throughout most of the show today about the 2006 Gerson Research Organization study, a remarkable, remarkable study about five-year survival rate of uh, 153 stage 1, 2, and 3 melanoma cancer patients who underwent dietary therapy versus 16,000 similar patients who did not undergo dietary therapy and uh, remarkable results. Uh, taken from that particular study. Uh, the diet, as we've pointed out repeatedly, is a kind of lacto-vegetarian type diet, mostly beans, legumes, again, uh, low sodium, low fat, high potassium, and there was some fresh made juice there. So you know that there was a lot of enzyme activity there because, as we've, we've always uh, told folks here on the Natural Health Show, when you make fresh vegetable and fruit juices and consume them within 20 minutes of their making, you've got an awful lot of raw enzyme activity, a lot of living enzyme activity. After 20 minutes, you put those juices in the refrigerator, uh, that enzyme activity is no longer available. So uh, I'm sure in these particular programs, at the Gerson uh, program, there was a lot of fresh raw vegetable juices. Again, the calorie count ranged from 2,600 to 3,200 calories. Uh, and as we pointed out earlier, the results were, you know, they speak for themselves. Those who underwent dietary therapy had consistent improvement factors here. The five-year survival for those cancer patients with with dietary therapy for stages one and two was 100%. The five-year survival for those without dietary therapy for stages one and two was 79. So again, the numbers were significant, 100 to 79. For the uh, stage 1 VA patients with metastases, 39% survival, five-year survival with dietary therapy, 6% without dietary therapy, stages 3A, 80 Two percent five-year survival with diet, 39 without. In stages 3, A and B, 70 percent five-year survival versus 41 without the nutritional therapy. So what can you say? Those are the results. And I encourage folks to take a peek at that particular study, fascinating study. In addition, I wanted to make sure that I did mention, too, that uh, the McGovern Senate Subcommittee Report of 1972, the very first study of health and human needs, nutrition and human needs, uh, 1,100 testimonies were given by scientists from eight different countries. Seven of the ten leading causes of, of preventable death were directly related to diet. And in that particular Senate Subcommittee study, they found that 30 percent of cancer-related deaths were preventable through diet alone. So think about the numbers here. We're losing almost 700,000 people a year from cancer, 30% of them needlessly because they're not getting the nutritional message. We want to kind of drill that point home. And again, one of the things discovered in that particular Senate subcommittee report is that 60% of the average American diet was comprised of fat and sugar. So there you have it. Wow, this time flies by very, very quickly. It was great to have you here with us on the Natural Health Show. And again, we want to remind everybody that uh, you can go to the website. The website's pretty easy to spot. It's www.maxhealing.com, one word. Stay tuned for Woody and Abby, Right Turn Radio, coming up. Thanks to Mike Roberts, Alex Todorovic, Adam Ng, Candida, of course. And thanks to you for listening. Until next Sunday, this is Mark McCuller, Money Hall. Please be wise, be aware, be well. Make it a healthy week. Good night.